Hello, Fred. How are you? Zev, it's good to hear from you, my friend. Good to hear from you too. Guys, a little disclaimer. Um, I've known Fred for many years. He's been a good friend, uh, a partner, someone who taught me a lot. Fred, you are the co-founder and president of one of my favorite organizations, the IES, the Institute of Excellence in Sales. You basically support sales professionals, sales VPs um, here in the area, nationwide, even sometimes internationally. You bring the best speakers and you're one of the best hubs for me, my team, and for salespeople in general to get more information, grow, get better. So thank you for all the stuff that you do. What I wanted to discuss with you is we're in a special uh, time right now, and what can salespeople do? So share with us a little bit first about you and the Institute, and then tell us what you guys do. The reason I got you on here is because I love what you guys are doing right now, and I want to showcase you as an example for what people should do. Yeah, no, it, it's great to see you uh, over Zoom, and, and thank you, Zoom, for providing this great service to everybody. Uh, no, thanks. I mean, we've been... Wexler has been such a great partner for the Institute for Excellence in Sales for probably at least five, six years right now. Uh, you manage a lot of our email marketing. You manage a lot of our LinkedIn work for a while. Um, help us with social media. You've done some videos for us along the way. You've also been a guest on my Sales Game Changers podcast, uh, which was a great episode. People can find that at salesgamechangerspodcast.com slash Zev Wexler. Of course, you have two E's in your name. Um, you've been a sponsor of our award event. Unfortunately, this year, our 10th annual award event uh, was going to be in June. It's now been delayed to October. But, uh, and I love those events. Guys, if any of you have not been in the IES award events, those are some of the best events I've ever been. Amazing speaker, amazing people. Um, and I'm, I'm bummed, but I'm, I'll be there at October. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. And uh, uh, this year, we're honoring Craig uh, Abad, who's the president and founder of Carasoft and you know, I'm hoping, <laughs> hoping by October that things are back to quasi-normal so that we can get a nice turnout to uh, acknowledge Craig and the great work his company has done over the years. But I've always enjoyed talking to you as well about um, how the Institute for Excellence in Sales is, is helping sales leaders around the globe. Our mission is to help sales leaders acquire, retain, motivate, and elevate top-tier sales talent. Uh, our mission changed about two years ago. Again, I, I host the award-winning Sales Game Changers podcast. And, and again, you've been a guest. You've been a great friend of that. Uh, I asked the question, what are the two biggest challenges you face as a sales leader? And I typically interview VPs of sales or um, chief revenue officers, sometimes at companies like IBM and Microsoft and Hilton, uh, large companies managing hundreds, if not thousands of salespeople. And when I asked the question, what are the two biggest challenges you face hiring, retaining, and motivating Top tier talent came up 50% of the time. So we took that as a message to shift our messaging. So that's what I wake up every day. And especially right now, my friend, during the middle of the pandemic, retaining, well, not really retaining, but motivating sales professionals uh, is something that we're, we're helping with first and foremost. I'm going to put the link on, but I want to call everybody that is going to see this to check out what you and the IES are doing on LinkedIn in particular, but all over. You guys are putting, I think, a webinar every day? Every day. Every day with a top sales leader, top sales expert. Once a week, you're bringing a nationwide expert to talk to salespeople. Basically, for an hour at least every day, you're giving training, knowledge, and support to the community of salespeople that are hurting right now. Absolutely. So we're doing five a week. Uh, on Tuesday, we're doing one just for women in sales. Uh, we're bringing on, a, you know, our, our cohort. We have a very active women in sales program. So Gina Stracuzzi, who you know, she runs that webcast. It's been great. Every Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern time, we're bringing on two or three sales VPs in a panel format, Q&A, you know, talking about how they're managing their team, how they're working with customers, how they're trying to lead in this challenging situation. Every Thursday, we talk about sales mindset. So we bring an expert on mindset and motivation to talk about, you know, how you can be directed towards the optimal mindset. And then every Friday at 11 o'clock, these are all Eastern time, we're bringing a great sales speaker, people who've adorned the IES stage in the past to talk about some of their content, but as it applies today. We're also starting a brand new uh, webinar on Monday afternoon. 
And it's going to be kind of like a panel format of sales experts where we're going to address, instead of like one topic or, or 10, we're going to address three topics. Uh, and we have a, a preset formula. You remember the TV show from the 90s, the McLaughlin Group. So it's going to be kind of based on that. And we'll take topics like um, uh, my customer is no longer sustaining our business. Uh, give an example. One of our members sells to the entertainment space. Obviously, right now, as we're doing this interview in the middle of April, it's very tough for the entertainment space for the foreseeable future. Imagine if you're a sales guy who has a million-dollar quota selling popcorn to movie theaters. Okay, what do you do? You know, movie theaters are closed, except uh, this week in Georgia, of course, they're opening up. But, <laughs> but I know we're getting into politics. But, um, but let's say you sell popcorn to movie theaters. Okay, you can do one of two things. You can sell popcorn to other places. You can't really sell too much to movie theaters right now, but you got to be responsive. It's a tough time. So we're talking about challenges like that. and We're we're very excited about what we're doing from the webcast. And then we're also repurposing them uh, as Sales Game Changers podcasts. And we're also transcribing most of them. And we're popping them up for replay for IS members as well. I love how much more you guys are doing. You've always supported the community. You've always put great content on there. Um, You've always been someone that I really love the you know, all the content they put out, but it is so much more now. And I love that you're an example for me, for a lot of people out there. You are now giving more value to salespeople that are sitting at home because they have nothing to do or not as much to do. Now, I want to give an example, kind of the same as you were mentioning. All of us need to think right now how we change our, our thinking, how we change, how we sell, how we change our products, our value, because the world is in a different place right now. You and I spoke uh, before we started recording that there are businesses that are not suffering. There are businesses that are even busier. There are businesses that are completely destroyed and there are businesses that are kinda in in the middle of this. But I'll share a story with you. I know this guy, he owns an Italian restaurant. Entrepreneur has many other businesses. He has a pretty high-end Italian restaurant, okay? Now, of course, his business is done and high-end takeout is not the best thing in the world. He changed his entire business. He is now selling frozen pizzas to end clients. He does delivery, he does takeout, and that's all he does. He did have to fire about 70% of his employees, and now everybody's just making pizza and freezing them, and he's making pretty good money. Um, He's able to sustain and stay in business where he changed everything, and now he's selling frozen pizza. I have, I'll take another restaurant example. I actually just got lunch from somewhere and they were not doing good. And I know the people, they're not clients of mine, but I've ate, eaten there many times. And I told them, what about a dinner service? You know, we're all struggling. Don't give us options. Tell me today's Lebanese dinner, how many you want, okay? Um, how about doing different nights? Give yourself, you only have three employees right now, you can't do selection, but people are hungry and people are home and we all know how much freaking tuna can you eat? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it, it's getting boring. Uh, There's a meme going on that a wife asks her husband, do you want dinner? And the husband replies, what are the options? And the wife replies, yes or effing no. (laughs) Um, You know, so these types of things, there's always ideas. What do you see out there with salespeople? What are things that they can do right now that maybe they couldn't do before? So I would say there's three things. We get that question all the time. So there's three things that we tell sales professionals, and that's the key word sales professional and at the Institute for Excellence in sales we have members uh, we're a member-based organization and typically our members have sales teams starting at five people going to thousands companies like Red Hat SAP SAP NS2 Oracle um, you know companies like that are members of the Institute for Excellence in sales Akamai Technologies and um, they're basically focused on three things Uh, make sure that your family's taken care of you know, if you have kids or not, or, or spouse or parents, whatever, make sure that your family's taken care of, and that you're taken care of as well. You know, it's, I like to joke that we're now with ourselves seven by 24, you know, because there's so much time that you're sitting in a chair in a home office, there's nowhere to go. You know, you can't go out for lunch, you maybe you can go out for a walk, you know, maybe once a week, you can go run to the supermarket, but there's really nowhere to go. So you're with yourself. Second thing is, you know, take care of your team. You know, you're, if you're a sales leader, you know, make sure that your team, that your people are taken care of. Uh, make sure that, you know, you know that they're being listened to, that you're thinking about them, that, 
if they have concerns, which a lot of people do, <clears throat> that you're listening to their concerns. And then the third thing is customers. So make sure that you're in relationship with your customers. You know, we get the question all the time, can I be prospecting right now? Can I be prospecting for new business? Again, we're doing today's interview, middle of April. Uh, we've been home for five weeks. We're probably going to be home for another five, six weeks. You know, let's just say hypothetically till the end of May, possibly June. Uh, a lot of companies, a lot of businesses and industries are reeling right now. But if you're a sales professional, right, you're in for the long term. This is what you do. So you better spin and think about how can I be providing value for my customers right now? So the first three weeks, it was about empathy. You know, touch base. Make sure they're okay. Make sure that your customers are healthy and safe and that their family is okay. Uh, some of your customers may be doing amazing right now. Some of them are like the restaurants are, are probably struggling, if you will. We have two members that I spoke to last week. One of them sells to the state and local government marketplace. He says his people are working around the clock. He says, and now they're selling things like medical devices and, you know, I don't know, thermometers, things like that. I don't know if they're selling masks, but, you know, basically things that would be of need, right? I have another member who sells to the entertainment space. So, you know, you still have people out there. If you're a professional, you're going to be in it for the long run. Figure out three things. How can I provide value to my customer right now? Even if it's just an empathetic call. Hey, I was thinking about you. You know, I'm always here if you just want to chat. Um, you know, we know where everybody is. Everybody's at home. So we could do a quick Zoom. We could call even like a text message, just, hey, how you doing? You know, something on those lines may be what's necessary right now. Second thing is, okay, if you're a professional, you know, what are you going to be doing when we hopefully get on the other side of this, whatever that looks like? And we're not going to say here it's on June 1st and the other side's going to look like this. And, but, you know, it's going to be different. Offices are going to be different. People are going to come back at different levels. Spending is going to be different. We're going to have to think about what do we learn, you know, over the last three months you know, about uh, how important is it? I think people are itching to get back, the people that we talk to. So uh, how can I be ready, you know, when, when not that moment happens, but when we're asked to now help get our business back in order? And thirdly, you still got to be thinking about who do I want to be as a sales professional? What do I need to get better at? Do I need to get better at presenting? Do I need to get better at social skills like you mentioned before? Um, do I need to get better at managing? You know, one thing I started doing is a personal thing. I'm reading a leadership book every day. Wow. So every day oh, I, have a, I have a stack right here on my desk. I went through my bookshelf. You see behind me a whole bunch of bookshelves. I picked out the ones that were on leadership. And I'll tell you why. Uh, my motto and the motto of all the people who work for the Institute for Excellence in Sales right now is show leadership to your constituency. Now is the time to show leadership to your constituency, your team, your membership, your customers, your employees. So how can you be showing that? And no one that I know has been through a pandemic like this before. Even two weeks ago, people were saying, I've been through 9-11. I know what happened on the other side. Been through the housing crisis, the banking crisis of 2008 and 9. So I know what it's going to be like on the other side. Unless you have somebody on your team who worked during the Spanish pandemic of 1918 or wherever that was, and they're probably retired by this point, no one knows how this is going to be at this point, but you can still improve your skills you can still read. You can still engage in conversations. Take one skill, become a better listener, mm -hmm. figure out how to become a better listener. That, that comes up on more than 50% of the sales game changers podcast. Be a better listener. Spend a couple hours over the next week, work on some skills, research how to be a better listener, which means ask better questions, focus, you know, there's a whole bunch of ways you can do that. So find something you can, not just one thing, but three things you can be better at because you have the time, my friend, no excuses. Completely agree with you. We all have more time. Uh, and where I found this interesting and I would love, I think we spoke about it, so I know what you're going to say, but um, I know that email marketing is working so much better now. So I'll, I'll share with you an example of what we just did. I just took a group, not many, I don't know, 50 of my clients, former clients, prospects and partners. Now, I've been researching for myself some things about, um, you know, financial grants and things like that that everybody's dealing with. And then I found that Facebook and Google are doing stuff. Um, now, it's, some of it does not apply for everybody. And right now, New York and San Francisco are actually getting all the money 
Um, and I think on the 22nd, the rest of the country is going to open. But I put together an email, simple email, with the research I did for myself for these 50 clients, prospects, partners, and the amount of response that I got, the, the gratitude, sometimes they're talking about business. There was a prospect that we were working on something with, some website stuff, and nothing was moving. And five minutes after they received the uh, Google and Facebook grants information email, they sent me an email, hey, let's do that. We need your help on this website. Let's have a meeting on Friday and close it. Okay? So they saw the value that I gave them with that, which is something I've already put time in, I've researched, why not share it? And so many people saw it so well. There's a client of mine, the only client of mine that we're actually having some trouble with. Um, you know, that they're wanting refunds for past months and, you know, things like that. And that was the first positive interaction I had with them was after this email. It's like, oh, we can use this and we can use this. So think about how you can share, how you can do things. If you figure out something for yourself, share it with others. I know you do it really, really, really well. But even reaching out to people, you and I spoke about this as well. We can reach out to people and ask for a Zoom meeting, and we have 90% uh, you know, better conversion. People want to do Zoom meetings because we have more time. Okay, yes. people want to contribute more. If I, you know, IES and Wexler, I, I look at you guys as um, an institute that we learn from and we partner with. If I ask you something now, I know you'll have more time because there's just more time. So we need to do more things with that time. One big thing that I've noticed and I told all my team to do, there's so many courses out there, Fred, that are three, four, five thousand dollar courses. You can get for 40, 20, zero dollars right now. Yeah. So get a skill, work on it. I'm working on my Spanish. Yeah, <laughs> muy enough. bien. Um, you know, muy bien. Si, gracias. Um, Me too. <laughs> muchas gracias. That's about the span of my Spanish, but I'm working on it because I have time now. I'm actually reading a lot more, listening a lot more because we have more time. What other things can salespeople do with their time, Fred? You know, one thing you just mentioned about building relationships. So you and I are big LinkedIn users. And we've, you know, we, we know a lot of angles around LinkedIn and how to optimize it. And, you know, every time I do a post, it gets like three, four or 5,000 views and 100 interactions and things like that. But there's a whole bunch of people that I'm friends with on LinkedIn. You know, typically you think of Facebook as the friends. I'm not doing as much Facebook. I might scan it for an hour before I go to sleep. But most of my stuff is on LinkedIn. I've reached out to a uh, hundred people that I've been friendly with on LinkedIn that I've never met. Most of them I've never spoken to. You know, most of the communication has been via LinkedIn message. And I said, you know, let's just take half an hour. Just look at each other. Tell me a little more about you. Um, what's kind of interesting is people don't look like their pictures. Um, as, as, much, <laughs> as much as you would think, but nonetheless, I've, I've had probably two dozen conversations in the last two weeks with LinkedIn friends, you know, and you know, very few of them are prospects. They're mostly friends, helpers, you know, but the thing with LinkedIn is LinkedIn, I know we talk about it as a prospecting tool. You know, LinkedIn is also for guys like you and I, a marketing tool. So a lot of LinkedIn is marketing, getting us exposure you know, people seeing that you post valuable things, you know, you post your, your, your interviews, you know, that you do and people say, Oh, there's Zev providing another interview with another business leader. And those things continue to, to trigger people. Uh, same thing with a lot of my LinkedIn posts. It's, Oh wow. You did a LinkedIn post and you got like a hundred comments. I mean, you must be doing something of value. So a lot of those people are, are friends. Uh, if you were going to like and comment one of my posts, you're, you're a friend. You know, so those things have been great. Now, it's it broken through, you know, the relationship, seeing somebody face-to-face -face on LinkedIn. Half these people, not half, but some live in Australia. You know, a couple, I didn't, they live in, one woman lives in Macedonia, you know, that I've been friends with for, I don't know, two years on LinkedIn. And we had a chat and it was great. And, you know, it was just, there was no agenda. It was just, we're friends on LinkedIn love to see in person. How can I help you? How can you help me? And, you know, just a little bit of a breakthrough, if you will. Um, so that's been a uh, tool. I, I want to go back to email as well. Uh, you know, you guys have been our email um, uh, marketing provider, I guess. You know, God, it's close to like six years now. Mm -hmm. You know, you got us on a great system. And, you know, it's kind of interesting. Prior to 
the pandemic and the stay at home, you, know, you got to be very careful with email because, you know, you got to send it at the right moment of the day and you check your opens and you can't send two a day because people delete and you unsubscribe. And, you know, now I send two emails a day and every morning I wake up, I do a LinkedIn post and I do an email and it's on that day's things that we are offering. You know, today we're doing the webinar like we talked about on women in sales. Send it out at eight o'clock. The webinar is at noon. I check the registrations. We see how it increases, if you will. But the point being is that, you know, I see my open rates have increased by at least 20%. My, I hardly get any unsubscribes. Mm -hmm. um, I've also spent, I've gotten to know the system that, that you guys have been managing for me. Your team has provided some insights that I've been using the system for six years and I just learned because um, now I have time as well. You know, I'm home. So I went to the Wexler team and I said, hey, I want to do this. What do you recommend? And you know, one of your uh, consultants created a video showing me exactly what to do. And it added me to a whole, it added a new list of people I wanted to communicate to. But I get responses. I tell people, hey, reply. Yeah. You know? And I was, I'm looking at the unsubscribe. It's hardly any unsubscribes. And the reading rate has been up 10, 15%. And the response time has been yeah. cut by, I'm not exaggerating, 90%. Yeah. Almost every email that I sent, whether it's a part of a campaign, email marketing, or just a direct email I'm sending to you, the response time have been cut by 80, 90% because we're all in front of our computers and we're all looking for something positive and effective and efficient to do. So all the emails we're sending getting a lot more replies. The stuff that we're putting online is getting a lot more views. People have time for more calls. So anybody in the sales game, I think that is saying, oh, there's nothing I can do. That's not true. That's just 100% not true. There's always stuff we can do. We may not be able to close things, even though I doubt that. I think we, we still are able to close things. People still need things. Okay, we're not, yeah, of course. If you know, We're not selling movie tickets right now. That's pretty clear. But um, you know, it's an interesting... I'll, I'll put some uh, sports into this because I miss sports. But The Last Dance just came out. The oh, yeah. Michael Jordan sure. documentary. It is the biggest talked about thing because there's no sports. All the people that like sports now are all talking about this one thing. So ESPN with not having any sports are having a lot of people sign up for the ESPN service right now because they want to watch the last dance. I was about to do it myself yesterday. And I was like, am I going to pay ESPN now when there's no sports? That's kind of difficult for me, but the people are doing it. People are buying these subscriptions to watch this. So they were supposed to release it next summer, I believe. But with COVID, they changed their plans. They released it now. And, you know, that's a great opportunity. So there's an opportunity in everything, even in the world of sports, that is completely shut down now. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Fred, you're uh, one of my mentors, and I always love talking to you. I want to ask everybody to look at all the stuff that you're doing. You're publishing things daily. Mm -hmm. I want them to look at your podcast that is amazing, award-winning. Not because I was on, there's much better guests. Um, can you give us actually, can you name a couple of top uh, episodes that you would like people to watch, especially about mindset? Yeah, so, um, well, today. So we have two things. We have Institute for Excellence in Sales webinars. And if people just go to www.i, the letter I, the number four, ESPD.com, i4ESPD.com, we've transformed our homepage to have the next four webinars in a row. And right below that, we have links to the replays. So just go to our website, i4ESPD.com. And we also have the podcast, the Sales Game Changers podcast. And um, today, uh, April 21st, we did a great episode. It's, we're recording this on a Tuesday. Uh, the guest was named Diane Cashin. So if you go to salesgamechangerspodcast.com uh, slash Diane Cashin, D-I-A-N-E-C-A-S-H-I-N, she wrote a book called Squeeze More Life Out of Time. Mm -hmm. Awesome book. It's, you know, and we were, she was a guest on our Mindset webinar last week, so webinar podcast. But we did an episode with her back in February. So it was before the pandemic. So I asked her for some ideas on what people should be doing today. So we, we put some of her ideas on the, the podcast page. But I was listening to the, the podcast a couple times in production, and it's still really valid. You know, how do you optimize yourself? I mean, it goes back to what you said before. 
uh, if you're a professional, right, and people who hopefully are listening to this and work for the companies that are members of the Institute, sales professional, okay? I guarantee you, even though NBA players aren't playing right now and Major League Baseball players aren't playing, if they're worth any salt, they're working out. Oh, yes. You know, they're working on their mindset skills. You know, Tom Brady, of course, is running around closed-off parks in Tampa Bay, but notwithstanding, you know, I know some of the stadiums are still open for some of the players, but if you're a professional ball player, man, you're out there working on it. You're running five miles, 10 miles a day. You're working on sprints, probably going to a batting cage. Same thing with sales. You know, listen to all these podcasts that are available. Um, companies, again, like organizations like the IES, you're producing things. There's no excuse. If you don't quintuple your level of excellence during this period, you ain't a professional, my friend, and you just don't care. And you know what? I you don't that. care. I love <laughs> that. We'll end with that. Guys, this is the time. I'm going to do a little uh, plug for you guys because you're amazing. People that don't know the IES, Fred, you bring the best sales expert minds, thinkers, authors. If you guys just look at the books behind you, I recognize almost every single book. And thanks to you, I know every single author. Thanks yeah. to you, I've actually talked to them about their books. The yeah. level of people that the IS brings is unparalleled. Never met an organization that does it so well. So everybody, check out the IES. Check out everything Fred does. And we'll see you guys soon. And Fred, thank you for your time, man. Thank you.